What up, what up, YouTube? It's your boy, Polymerization, guys. You know what we do, and I'm back. I know, guys, it's been a while. Uh, I'm probably, like, almost two months. I uh, haven't really done any content, nothing like that. I do want to apologize on my film materials. Um, you know, it's just been a rough ride. Um, I've changed, you know, careers-wise, uh, making more money, which is, you know, awesome for me. Uh, but, you know, also, there for a while, I did get the COVID. Uh, back in April, so I do apologize for that. It's just one of those things. It hurts you a lot worse than what people think. So, you know, guys, be safe, get tested, and also get the shots, you know, see what you got to do, guys. But without further ado, guys, man, we got so much to catch up on. We got a lot to do. Uh, first thing I want to do is an update of my rock deck. You know, we all love it. It's an amazing deck. It's a really fun rogue. Uh, I, I love this deck. It's probably one of my top favorite decks of all time. But, you know, guys, let's get into it. And, you know, if you're an NFL subscriber, hit that subscribe button, guys. Be one of my film materials. I couldn't have done this without y'all. I love every one of y'all. And you know what? Let's get in that updated deck profile. Yeah. All right, everybody. Let's get into that deck profile. We're going to start with the rocks and the monsters. Of course, more than anything, we're still running three of the researcher. Still running three of the seeker. And, of course, we're still running three of the analyzers. This is kind of like the bread and butter of the deck, what makes it go. Uh, there's no reason why you shouldn't play uh, three of each of these. Uh, they just, they're just ridiculous. Uh, another thing I'm also doing is I'm actually running three Doki Dokis. Doki Doki is just too strong and powerful. I don't see why you wouldn't. Uh, it's still a strong going first card. Uh, even though the deck's every guy's guy's weakness. You pick your deck, you pick your weakness. I would say your normal summon is really reliable in this deck. If your normal summon doesn't go through, it does hurt unless you have a good follow-up and you get a good hand, but that's just beside the point. Uh, I also run three Guardians. Uh, just having that good negate is always amazing. And I am running run two Suppliers. I like Supplier, don't get me wrong. I just feel like Supplier is a little bit of a dead in hand more than anything. Uh, it's great when you mill it and everything like that. It's good to help do chain blocks, but I'd rather have that. Another thing that I'm not going to have in this deck, which I won't show, is I'm not running the... The Parallax Seeds, they're not rocks. They're good in hand, but when you get the mills, they don't give you the consistency boost, so you do it. Um, we're also running two of the uh, Crystals, uh, the water one. Uh, that feels really good. Another one I'm running three of is Tackle Crusader. Crusader, I love a lot, especially if you're going second. I love this card. For one, it's a rock, it's earth, it's low four. It has all that synergy you're asking for. But the best card I like Tackle Crusader is when it ever goes from field to grave, it automatically goes off as a Book of Moon. So if you got something that you have problems with, especially has a high attack, just Book of Moon that monster to get rid of it. Or even possibly sometimes you can be out in the gate with that, which is really amazing in my part. I'm still running the uh, Prank Can Engine, so we're still doing three Roxies and the one Dropsies. I still think this is really good in the engine. It really helps boost the consistency. Sometimes that banishing off Roxies to uh, banish a card and then draw, sometimes that helps you so many situations. I can't explain how many times that rock sees just that banish to draw. It's just helped me out so much. Uh, one thing uh, that I'm not running that's not rock, I am running the one Plague Spreader. Plague Spreader is so good because you can run it off the Dark Rule. I mean, not Dark Rule anymore. No Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. On uh, the Needle Fiber. The Needle Fiber just helps you extend with this in so many ways. You can just make a lot of good boards. And the last monster I'm running that is not a rock is the very statue win yes if you haven't figured by now i am running the bird lock which is very easy to do in this deck uh you can actually end on a board where you don't have to worry about getting super polyed and stuff like that so i still think this is great uh hand traps only thing i'm running is three ash and three nibiru's I think this is all you really need, especially with the current meta and the way the whole format going. Uh, Ash usually stops a lot, and the Bureau just helps you, like, you know, stop your opponent from going to fifth summon. Uh, it's still really good. You can still mill this, search this. This is just no reason why you shouldn't play it. Going to the spells, um, I am running three Dark Ruler No Mores. Just for the off chance, you know, you don't win the dice roll and everything, and then you're going second. You need to have that out for if your opponent makes a big board. I mean, the mirror match, stuff like that. You need to shut their cards off just so you can do it. And even though you don't hit them for attack power, you can still shut everything off, clear the board, establish your board, and you can look at them like, all right, I broke your board and I break mine. So that helps out a lot. And the last three spells is the signs because it's like Monster Reborn plus one for this deck. I mean, there's no reason why this, this card's amazing. 
Now going to the extra deck, the extra deck took a little while to spice out a little bit. It's a little different from my last one. So I still do the meow meow and the doo doo doo. That is for your prank can engine. Uh, enough said there. I do run the one reproductus, the one crystal uh, pile of fibrax. I guess it's an ulti if you want to see it close. I am kind of flexing a little bit. Ain't that beautiful? So the point of the reproductus is just so you can go into your some more. Uh, some more burn so that way you can go into you know special summon the barrier statue and then put your opponent on auto lock this will just win games by itself even if you have a bad hand you get to this that's all it that matters you can pretty much just win the game right there and control everything link fours are on appaloosa because appaloosa is just great uh i do have a boar sword you don't have to play boar sword uh, originally i play access code but it's in my other deck uh so i just put boar sword in here it's just as good just easy to establish no big deal there Going into the Synchros, I actually run Herald of the Arclight. Herald of Arclight, uh, still really good. Uh, a lot of things need their graveyards to go off, especially from my hand or deck. So this is still an amazing card that wins games. Uh, Coral Dragon, a lot of people don't play Coral Dragon, but I love it for a fact because it's a level six and it's a tuner. So you can actually Synchro up into something a level 10, which is new, which I will show later. I also run level six uh, Risen, the, the wind version of Rackpite. And I also run the water because this is really good. You have a walking DD Crow, and then this one you have uh, just a spell and trap negate. Plus, you can just return everything back to the field depending on how many rocks you do. I am also doing the Crystal Wing, and yes, I think Crystal Wing is just so much better than Boiled Savage. And yes, flexing again, that is a ghost rare, and it's beautiful. Beautiful. But Boiled Savage, I love it a lot, don't get me wrong, but it's just it just negates. Crystal Wing will actually negate and destroy which i love a lot more and it's a lot easier to make uh i still think this is a better card also if you bait out the negate from dragoon and stuff you could actually just tack into something that's uh, level five or higher gain that attack and then just beat over it so this is really helpful in beating over stuff especially with the dragoon and the newest synchro to the deck that is just amazing is the ruddy rose dragon i wish it was bloody rose but ain't that a beautiful card man that artwork is just amazing the car, I don't think I like about this card more than anything is that a lot of people think that we rely on our graveyard. I mean, yeah, you sort of do, but once you like get rid of your opponent's graveyard, you can win the game easily with just this alone. They lose a resource resource management. You can outgrind them a lot more because they got to reestablish a graveyard. I just love this guy. You put this on Shadows, uh, Dinosaurs, their graveyard's gone, they lose resources. So this card right here, I love a lot. I've actually a uh, spice card. I thought about it's in my side. I'm not really gonna sell my side, but I've actually had dimension shift for my side because you don't really need your graveyard. Most of the time, I'll take out the freight can engine and add in dimension shifters and other stuff, and then I just go off that way. And the last two for the XZs is a Bist Driller and Gout Granite. These cards are just broken in the deck. This is easy to make. Just shuts off graveyard. This is really busted. Can you search any rock, whether it be your Animanspader or your uh, Nibiru? But guys, that is everything in my uh, deck profile. Uh, I mean, try it out. I mean, I'm seriously, it's consistent. It's really good. Uh, I've actually thought about building a pure variant where you just run shifter and a bunch of other stuff that shuts graveyards off. And really, if you play the pure, this deck don't really need graveyards that much. You can just win, auto win that way. But you know what, guys? That is the deck profile. You know what? And if you ain't a fellow uh, subscriber, don't forget, guys, hit that description down below. Be a fellow material, guys. I love you. I'm glad to be back. I can't wait to do more for you guys. See ya.